Alright, I have a blank project here. First, I'm going to drag in the asset I want to use for my tile set. Alright, I've dragged in my tile set. You can feel free to use it as well. Link below. Now let's make a new 2D scene. I'm going to name this main. Now let's right click and add child node. I'm going to make a node to hold my layers. I'm going to make another node 2D. I'll call this a layer holder. Now let's attach to that, which we can use this button. Let's make the tile map a layer node. This is the new one that's in 4.3. On the side, let's make a new tile set. So we'll click empty, new tile set, then click where it says tile set. Since my tile set is 64 by 64, I'm going to change that to be the size here. That's how large each tile is. Now at the bottom, go to the tile set tab and you can drag your image over. So in my case, that's simple 64x tile 6. It's going to ask if I want to make the atlas here, and I'll say yes. Just like the old days, we can draw up here, but we can also make another layer here. Let's do that. I'm going to duplicate this one that we already have. So you can right click and say duplicate. So now I have two of these. If I go to the move tool, you can see now I have two of them. I'm going to undo and delete all these red tiles on this second layer. So you can select the eraser and use the rectangle tool. Make sure you go back to the mouse mode. There we go. So this is all the red tiles from this layer. But with the second layer selected, I'll change to blue and I'll go back to the pencil mode and deselect the eraser. So one advantage that we have in 4.3, since each layer is on a separate node, we can have separate rotation for each one. So if I go to the rotate tool and I hold control to snap, you can see it. I get to rotate each layer individually. You can also have separate material for each layer. So remember, it works a little bit weird. Whatever you apply is going to apply to all tiles on that layer. We can now also add new layers at runtime. So here, let's look at how to do that. I'm going to duplicate this blue layer. Let's press duplicate, and I'm going to delete everything on this layer. I'm going to go to the mouse mode, get the eraser, and use the rectangle tool. Select all that. So if I hide the first two layers, you'll see there's nothing on this third layer. We can right click and say, Say save branch as seen. We can call this a default layer. I'm going to go ahead and reveal the first two layers again. There's a few ways that you can do this. If you want to be more like the old school days, you can have a script be on the uh, node that's holding these layers, or you could have a script for each layer independently. I would say you want to have a script for each one if each layer is doing something totally different. I personally prefer having one controller node for each layer, but it's up to you how you want to set this up. I'm going to select this layer holder node and attach a script. And sure, I'll leave it as layer holder. Now to add layers at runtime, let's drag over the default layer that we had set up. I'm going to click and drag. And then before you release, start holding control and it will add in all this extra stuff for you. Now inside of the ready section, let's take this out. And let's say we'll add in like three new layers. For that, let's say for I in range three, we can say var new layer is equal to default layer dot instantiate remember this creates the new layer but we still have to add it as a child to this node so below that let's say add child you want to add a new layer let's go ahead and test that that's working since we currently have this empty layer on the side here that we instantiated we can delete that now let's press the play button it's going to ask if we want to make this our main scene and we'll say select current we can save it in the default location, so our game starts up fine. Now let's go in the remote tab. We drop down main and layer holder. You'll see that these did get added in here. That's what we want. The first one is going to have the original name, but then the others get named a little bit differently. Yeah, cool, that works. Let's stop the game for our better understanding here. I'm going to rename the layers on the side. When working with the tile map and the layers, I personally like to have a different layer for each type of object. For example, you might have one that has all the background tiles, another one that has some spikes or different enemy tiles. That may or may not apply to how you're making your game, but for this one, I'm going to have a layer for each color that I'm using. So with this first one selected, that's where I drew all these red tiles. I'm going to rename it. You can right click and say rename. I use the shortcut of F2. We'll call this red layer. And the second one as a blue layer. This is one way that we can do this. If we click and drag on the red layer over here, and then remember before you release, start holding control. So if we wanted to reference the red layer directly, we can do that. Remember this script here is on the layer holder. If you want to just add some tiles to the red layer or the blue layer, let's go ahead and drag that one over. So remember drag over, start holding control. Right here, I'll say blue layer dot set cell. 
This is similar to what we had in the past, except now, because the blue layer is not a tile map, it's a tile map layer. We don't specify what layer we're placing on. Instead, we just give the coordinates to view where this is going to be placed. Select your layer and make sure you're in mouse mode. Remember, I have mine rotated here, so let's fix that. I'm going to reset the rotation. There we go. Now my numbers are no longer backwards. So now when I mouse over, you'll see the number down here. So right here, this is negative 3, 0. That's a negative 3 on the x, 0 on the y. And remember, negative y is up here. It's weird if you're used to math class. Let's say I want a vertical line here of blue tiles. So all of these have the negative 3 x value. So in our script, let's put this inside of a for loop. Let's say for y in range, we'll say this has a height of 6. The coordinate is a vector 2i. So we'll say vector 2i. This is negative 3, and whatever our y value was, the source ID. Remember, this is derived from, if you select the layer down here, if you hover over one of these, it says source 0. That's because it's image 0. But if you like mess up and delete it and then drag over, then the ID might be different. To check that, you can go to your tile set, and it's going to be this ID right here. Since all of mine are in ID 0, we don't want magic numbers that much. So let's add in a variable for that. We can say const main source ID. And since it's a const, we like to use capitals for that. So main source ID equals zero. So let's put that down here. Main source ID. The atlas coordinates. Remember this is down here when you hover over one of these. It's the position in the tile map. So this one is at 1, 1. And this x here is at 4, 1. Again, we want to use variables here. So I'm going to make a const up here. This blue one that I'm going to use is at 1, 1. We'll say const blue tile. Blue tile equals a vector 2i of 1, 1. And if you want to be more specific, we can say blue tile atlas position, atlas pause. Let's copy that and put it down here for a blue tile atlas pause. And we have the alternative tile, which is cut off here, but it defaults to negative 1. We currently don't have one. Remember, that's if you want to set up this whole right-click create alternative tile stuff, but we didn't do that here, so we can just leave that one out. Keep in mind, by default, the camera is only going to look at this bottom right quadrant here. So let's click the main layer and then add a node. We want a camera 2D. And you'll see by default, this covers the center region. So if we run the game now, there we go. Looks like we still got a little bit cut off, but it's fine. If we really want to, we can move our camera down a bit. So I'll select the camera, go to the move tool. And if you want to hold things to one axis, then you can hold shift. I'll just drag my camera down and run the game again. And there we go. Now I know some of you might be coming from the old tile map system. So I'm not actually adding it here, just showing it. You might be using this one, but it's deprecated. Remember, you can still keep using this in 4.3. They're just not going to add features to it. If you make a new project, you should use the tile map layer using those new layers that we added. Since we used add child to determine the order that they're going to be in, if we want to place on some of those tiles, then we can just use get child. Similar to how we have blue layer up here, which is just referencing one of the children of this layer holder, we can just say get child and we specify the index. Remember index starts at zero here. So position zero would be red. Position one would be blue. You can use whatever applies for your project. So let's say I want this first new layer that gets added to be the green layer. Remember, I already have two layers here. That's index zero, index one. So the next one is going to be index two. So I'll say this is the green layer. I'll make a variable for that. Our green layer index equals two. I'll say get child green layer index. And we know that it's a tile map layer. So we can use set cell, but the game doesn't necessarily know that. So if we want to have the autocomplete, we can say var green layer is equal to get child whatever as tile map layer. So now when we go below here, we'll get the autocomplete. So if we say green layer dot set cell, you can see it knows I'm trying to use set cell here. If we didn't do this, then it wouldn't know what type this was. Remember, since we're adding these children later, they're going to be drawn on top of what we already had. So for example, let's say I'm going to draw a line like right down this part here so it covers up the blue and the red. And I'll highlight the red here. So this here is x0. So let's again say for y in range 6. 
Then set cell at vector 2i with x0 and y of our y variable. We're still using the same source ID, which we have as the variable main source ID. And the green tile atlas position, mine is at 0, 1. I'll make a variable at the top for that. So I'll duplicate this line, control C, control V, and this is green, and our x position is 0. Remember, we want to match what comes up right here. So we want our atlas coordinates to be green tile atlas pause. So let's run the game now. Oops, looks like it's slanted, because when we saved that tile map, it was rotated. So we can just double-click to open the default layer that we set up, click it, and let's reset that rotation. Nothing will visibly change, but when we run the game, there we go, now it works. If we wanted it to be more up here, as you expect, we just change this part here. So we want to start at negative 3 and go to, let's say, 3. Remember, this is exclusive upper bound. So it's going to go from negative 3 to 3 and not hit 4. There we go. I'm going to close the game and open the project settings. If you search the word top, you can go to the window section. And let's check always on top, close that. When we run the game now, you can see I can click over in the editor and this window will stay on top. So if we go to the remote tab, here's a few cool tricks we can do. If I select this one, remember this is our green layer, I can change the X or Y position. So let's say I change the X position to be like 200. This is something that we could not do in 4.2. You can individually move each layer. That's really helpful. So you could do this with code if you wanted, like have some sliding thing right here. I'm just showing in the editor as an example. Overall, those are some of the main changes in 4.3 for tile map layers. If you have any questions, leave them down below. Maybe I'll make a follow-up video. Other than that, thanks for watching.